Welcome to our Rolling Deep D&D podcast. Uh, tonight we're jumping right into one of our more action-heavy segments. Uh, last segment, oof, 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 our party managed to jump through uh, the transport portal inside of the city of Kuba with the help of the Inner Druidic Circle, uh, with the intention of appearing in Bashinwood to question and receive assistance from the Druids about these cursed world seeds that seem to be causing mishap and mayhem all around us. Um, before we get started today, however, I would like Drunor to leave the table. Yeah. All right. Closet. Closet. All right. You can't hear things in the closet. Poor guy. <laughs> What's happening? Once he is a safe distance away, we will begin with the rest of the party. <laughs> in the closet. Yeah, it's soundproof. I go in there, but I have panic attacks. <laughs> <laughs> We all yeah, need to ask Can sometimes. you still hear us? As Brunor, most likely is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so who jumped in first? Do we remember correctly? Ludicius followed. Uh, you see. Uh, oh, wait, no. It was you. Kiori okay, jumped in first. Mm-hmm. Then you, then me. I'm pretty sure I was last. You were last before Brunor, I believe. Yes. yes. <laughs> Immediately get Samani, uh, being the second one from the portal, uh, you see on the ground, uh, <clears throat> kind of like seemingly the wind knocked out of her, Koyori and Muck, uh, circling Koyori. She's kind of like gathering her breath, immediately looks at you, uh, jumps up and embraces you, uh, grabbing your side. Uh, not long after, <clears throat> you hear Jean pop through. Uh, you guys uh, see some grass and some leaves start to fly by as the wind, kinda, the wind of the storm that was brewing in Pugo before you guys left. Uh, is maintaining its distance from you guys, actually, but um, moving in. Uh, you guys feel like cold from all the wind. <laughs> Ludicius, you land in as well. Um, roll me a perception check, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> uh, yeah, you need your own dice. Here, I feel like that calls for a reroll because my yeah. hand was. Yeah. That was my bad. Um, oh. Alright. The perception checks take time as everyone's That's gathering right. their senses, looking about. 18. 18. Uh, you guys look near. Uh, even though it's the middle of the day, everything appears nearly black. The wind is whipping, you guys cannot hear. The storms are very intense, very loud. You guys see some lightning in the background. Uh, you look around. Uh, you guys also, Jean specifically, hears the rushing of water. Uh, she was an 18. I'm going to say that you know for a fact there is going to be some sort of waterfall nearby. Uh, right in front of you guys immediately, while you're still being embraced by Koyori, uh, you see an altar. Uh, and to your back, uh, a large roaring bonfire that seems to be unaffected by the storm at hand. Uh, right behind you guys, the portal starts to kind of like close, get a little bit. You can see like the edges of it kind of lose its color. You can see through the transparency before. Uh, through, we see Gaston, uh, bleak, drained of energy. <laughs> As he lands, rolls uh, nearly unconscious on the ground. You see as he lands, spit and everything <laughs> curls out of him. Uh, you guys look, this stone Janazi looks even more gray and more drained than normal. Oh boy. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> a gas stone uh, is a uh, When did he leave? Didn't he jump through behind me? I thought so. He was last. Gaston? Was, oh, weren't you supposed to stay? That you couldn't jump. See, he's gathering his breath, looks at you talk. He manages to lift his head up and says, The portal is unstable. Runor didn't make it. What do you mean? I wasn't sure. There was a loud screeching, a voice that was heard. I'm not, something has been erratic. I can't look. He kind of lays back down near the dirt a little bit. Will he ever come out? Uh, he 
he comes back, uh, eyes closed, uh, draining. Uh, he says, Seek a Cronus. You know, daily cleansing at the head of the brook. Head of brook of Cron. Yes. And you see him, like, point, uh, and you, as you turn your guys' head, you guys see the massive lumbering oak tree of Bashanwood. This tree has a, a radius of nearly 150 feet. Or not radius, I'm sorry, a diameter of like 150 feet across. This is very wide, very large. Uh, as you guys see, there's actually um, a uh, there's a door going into sort of the trunk of the oak tree. As you can tell, the, this outer shell of the uh, tree has been weathered away. You know, it's been enchanted. It looks like there's a place to go. However, he pointed around the tree. Okay. Mm. Um. Can I pick up Gaston like on my shoulders and like we march to where we need to go? Yeah, uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, you don't even have to roll a strength check. He's very willing and he's trying to help you. Cool. Uh, you guys march past. You guys are absolutely soaked and drenched and now you guys are muddy as well as you are working your way. Uh, you kind of walk around this large oak tree. You know, you see the thick and brown uh, bark. It's something that Odysseus has never seen before. This is very new to him. You know, your lands aren't as, uh, these are not the same, the tree? not the same type of tree necessarily. It's not like the deciduous forest that he's used to. He's seen trees. <laughs> uh, you guys go around the corner, uh, and as you see around the corner, in the storm, uh, you see a glowing pool, uh, surrounded by very thick, uh, you guys wouldn't be able to tell what kind of rock, uh, very thick rock as it creates like a little pool, uh, with a stream that, uh, Exits that little pool, leading towards the oak tree, which you guys see before. But uh, standing there next to this pool, in the middle of the storm, seemingly harnessing the power of the lightning, just <sighs> rinsing his uh, aura and his motions over the pool in front of him. So, real quick, it's Lonnie. What happened to your sister? She's right here. She jumped she's just hiding behind me. She's a little nervous. We jumped after her. She's a first time adventurer. Mm. Corey looks at you, uh, very scared, uh, not finding a voice. Is this is a situation she's never been put in. Put in. Mm. See, I told you. I'm telling her that she should have stayed at the academy. Yeah, you should have stayed at the academy. <laughs> <laughs> I like kids. <laughs> You're going to learn today. <laughs> But you approach the little acorn man who is roughly. Oh, it's an acorn man? <laughs> it's a little acorn. Is it like an acorn cap? It is, his rim is a cap, and you see a little bent twig at the top. Normal, uh, aged looking acorn as if a seed that was never planted and kind of going around as he's. He's roughly eight inches shorter than you. Oh. He's not big at all. Okay. Uh, as you approach him, how do you, how do you approach him? Uh, hello? Gaston sent us here for daily healing. Can I walk closer so that I'm in his eyesight area? He is looking like directly at the road, <laughs> oh. like not paying attention to you guys necessarily, or at least you believe he is. But you walk closer, do you still have Gaston on you? Yeah. Okay, awesome. You kind of like set him down. Gently set. But yeah. Okay. Uh, he sets him down, and uh, as you can, as you sit, set him down, uh, the druid sees essentially a clairvoyant light, kind of connecting him via the ground to Acronis, uh, and you hear, uh, with his eyes closed, a tongue that you guys don't understand before uh, he quickly stops what he's doing and turns to face you all, and it kind of stands. Uh, he says some more to Gaston, who nods, uh, and immediately uh, you guys see this uh, little acorn in front of you uh, reach out, his arm extends, 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 10, 20, 30 feet to the nearest uh, forest line on the side of the uh, mountain. From there, you see his body crumple up, curl, and essentially shoot through his fingertips to the inside of the tree, and like that, wow. acorn is no more. You guys don't see him. Did he help Gaston? I don't understand. Runar, can you please come back out? A lot of shit's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you 
fuck asleep. thrown out, uh, your arms were extended uh, as you went through the portal. You managed to not break them as you are tumbled about. You're thrown a little unconscious. Uh, not unconscious, I apologize. You're thrown just your senses for a wreck. Uh, uh, in your head, you hear, go for the ride. Go for the ride. Go for the ride. Uh, you kind of are bouncing to a halt. You know, Your elbow was tucked in to protect your face so nothing was really scratched up there. Uh, but you have a bunch of dirt and dust in your mouth and rolling. I want you to do me a favor and roll me a perception check as you lift your head. Is that like me? 21. With a 21, you raise your head and you see before you a landmark destination uh, as you see the Bashing Little Oak, one of the largest, most grand trees uh, around in this forest, nearly towering. Uh, with a 21, you know for a fact that this is the stem of the Monumentous River. Uh, this is where all life of the forest, essentially, is started. Uh, you look up, and matching your gaze, you see a ridge line of Windham Spine, which is a place that you've always wanted to go. You've heard about it. This is the largest mountain range on the continental uh, world here. Uh, you've never actually been there, but you know the vast amounts of minerals and rocks. Uh, however, you're quickly snapped back into place by listening to the sound of grass kind of tumbling. Uh, with the 21, you kind of look look around and you see the skull uh, from your bag rolling across the open field that you find yourself in. You find yourself in a field roughly 40 feet wide. As you look around, the grasses are long, yellow, dying, uh, but you're also surrounded by like a tree, tree line where you can see that you are in a deeper forest. Okay. I'm gonna try to grab that skull. Awesome, so you're just gonna like stand up and try to yeah, grab it immediately. Just roll and roll. Okay, do me a favor and roll me a strength saving throw. <coughs> Negative one. As you try to stand up, your legs, as oh. you were on your knees, your legs are wrapped as you are entangled, stuck into the ground. Um, I have a question. Do you have your pearl on? Yeah. Okay, uh, you hear screaming in primordial, a hero, yet showered with affection after returning from war, from his family, his friends, his community, they all adore a valiant effort, his services are tangible, he's there, you can see him protecting them, but the common shield himself from reality, cauterizing their ears from the untold stories of those who suffered at their hand as their hero. I'm not blind. And as you sit here, I'm not blind, uh, you see uh, four large black fingers kind of sweep in on both sides, uh, as well as uh, lava markings, lava like orange fluorescent bright, uh, as well as splotches of dark gray as this sort of head one being mount kind of crawls across the opening from you, the head is still continuing to roll. Um, you, all you hear specifically from the silhouette that appears on top of this mount is just the jingling of metal buckles along the sides as this mount kind of slowly appreciates as he fully ex gets out of the darkness as <laughs> lightning of the storm rages on, the wind picks up and gets louder and louder as well as his voice does. Ah. He says, I can recognize the raw potential that lingers. The head keeps rolling to the foot of the chameleon, essentially. Picture a chameleon with black sky. Uh, before the figure stops, reaches out, a large bony hand is exposed, no gloves, it grabs his skull and places it onto its head. Uh, immediately, it kind of takes it. Recognize it as you see it kind of floating there. Uh, for the first time, you see pure life come from his eyes. He looks at you and says, 
My name is Marty. You deserve that much for taking care of Sir Shit Stains and letting me free. Well, that's your little bullshit crew of misfits no longer on this case. I can't afford to have you guys interfere with my business. I know adversaries when I see them, so unfortunately, this is where your story Gust is cast upwards as you are now let go of your entanglement straight up into the air. Uh, and roll me initiative, please. So, now that I, I mean, I couldn't like speak when he was doing the whole spiel. You could have. Oh, I just didn't want to interrupt you. However, I'm like, who are you? <laughs> uh, with his other movement, he Marty said, who? He says, uh, this will be where your story hits rock bottom. And he uses Gus again to slam you into the ground. Um, I'm going to use what? Roll 2d8 for damage. Eleven damage you take as you are slammed onto the ground. I'm not gonna say you're not prone, but I'm gonna say you're like kneeling down on one knee, you know. Okay. Uh well, I'm going to immediately go into my archer story starry form. And um yeah, base I'm gonna hit him with the uh, guiding bolt. Please do. And say, why are you doing this? So, and well, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, just the standard one. Please do. Let's see, roll the hit, that'll be um, 16. Yes, hits. For 12 damage. Uh, as you rear back your guiding bolt and uh, harnessing the power of the lightning, you feel the energy in the air as like a strike of lightning juts across and hits the middle of the field. Your guiding bolt uses the energy in the path that just cleared it. Just aim really directly. And you see that your guiding bolt hits him directly in the chest. And he just inhales the magic sent at him. As he looks at you and says, didn't damage him at all? No. He says, my turn. And he casts a spell on you. You feel from your feet initially, they feel hot, and then very, very cold. And then nothing at all. As that feeling chases up your leg, through your body, but when it hits your lungs, you immediately start choking. Uh, you're running out of air. I need you to roll me a constitution saving throw. Uh, that's 18. An 18? Okay. Um, you are choked. As you can feel the blood in you, the section is not moving. Because your heart is having problems pushing all this through as all the energy is drained from you as you take 22 points. Okay. As he sees you choking, he says, You had promise. I might recruit you in the afterlife. Okay. I'm just gonna jump away. I have my helmet. Mm -hmm. So 90 feet, opposite direction of this guy. Yeah. Just, I don't care where. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. So with 90 feet, you are able to boost back. Uh, Is that toward us? Okay, I'm gonna let you roll because I don't like that roll. Roll me a d20. 13. Okay, yeah, with the 13, you shoot yourself back. You manage to shoot yourself like over like the brim of the, the trees around you, so you actually like kind of like kind of like land yourself like three fourths of the way up in a tree of like the first or second ring. Of the... okay. And that's just my movement, right? When I use that helmet. I'm tempted to say it's an action, but I'm gonna say, how about a bonus action? Does that work for you? Yeah. Cool. 
We'll say that. Because then I can still cast a spell, right? Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to cast Jump. <laughs> it's just the same thing. <laughs> so you, you land, and as you land on the branch, you just use it as like a springboard as you kind of jump, I'm assuming, the same direction as yeah, far as you can. Yeah, away. <laughs> you bolt your way out of there. Uh, winded and hurt, I'm assuming. What's your health at? Five. Cool. Uh, you still feel this drained energy from you as you're soaring over. You don't see any sort of birds or anything as your face is pelted hard with rain. Yeah. And you go, you see lightning flying back and forth. Uh, you fly away from the passion of the tree. Uh, however, when you, uh, as you're going to land, uh, two arms uh, caress you as you kind of are heading towards directly at a tree. Uh, and he's kind of like, they caress you, hold you, carry you until you realize that the tree is holding you as your uh, catch, was, as your jump was off base. <laughs> the tree's uh, arms are holding you in the air, uh, he's, and a little whisper comes to you that says, you're safe now. As uh, you assumed it was from the leaves on the tree. Yeah. Uh, and roll me a constitution saving throw. 19. Or oh. Plus oh. three, so 22. All right. Oh. Uh, you don't pass out, but you're uh, in and out, your eyes close as uh, this tree seemingly moves effortlessly, like without any sort of dichotomy of being caught uh, through this. Uh, and uh, after soon, you realize you kind of a couple deep breaths, close your eyes, you wake up to the babbling of the water, or some water it's still raining on your face. However, you look around and you feel behind you a large presence of rock. You open your eyes, you see an acorn staring you in the face. <laughs> little chunks kind of broken of his skin. Oh, he has a very thin mustache, uh, little tiny little teeth. Uh, and his eyes are very, very small and slitty. Uh, uh, as he takes uh, what seems to be just like a normal wood branch and kind of like waving it over you, uh, you feel your insides rejuvenate as uh, positive energy is replacing the negative energy as you are healed forward. Fourteen health. Uh, he says, there, 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 there. And you're soothing, and I feel like Runor feels comfortable enough to almost daze off. Yeah. If you choose to, but you do feel that comfortable under this presence. Well, I'm just kind of like half awake. What happened? Uh, this is your attack. Where's your body? It's fine now. It's not in your body. Uh, you guys, the other members of the party, uh, had congregated to get out of the rain uh, inside the large fashion wood oak. Uh, normally this is held for sort of like religious purposes or celebrations, so you guys are standing. Uh, I guess I don't know exactly where you are. However, you're inside the middle chamber, which I can describe if you guys roll perception checks. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to say your danger sense went off when he arrived, and you were able to tell that Runor is on the scene. Okay. Uh... They're your party. Yeah. Uh, guys, my danger sense is like, whoa. What's we going on? Runar's here. No way. Yeah, he's. I point in whatever direction. He is from where <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which direction, but I point him. towards him. We gotta go this way. Yeah, and then you guys all kind of assume, just like, let's <laughs> the dude. Uh, Koi Rory says, can I come? Yeah. Let's let's go. Go. Hold a hand. Let's go. And her and Muff. Follow you guys. You guys all kind of congr- head out and kind of congregate near. You guys make like a semicircle. Runor is kind of phasing in and out. He sees his uh, friends all appear. And I'm going to turn it back to you guys at the moment. Uh, where were you? What happened? Oh, there was. The skull has a body. <laughs> has a body? What? A yeah. talking skull? And it kicked my ass. <laughs> do, do you need health potion stuff? Are you okay? Uh, and Cronus mean, says, uh, Your potions would be wasted. Let me in my times. Okay. As he continues to do 
do it. Uh, and you will receive the echo on the uh, by the end of his session. I see. Thank you, Acorn. Please address me as such. Thank you, Acorn. Uh, he goes back to tending, uh, tending you. Uh, you notice that you don't have your little pouch that contains your little world seeds, however. Oh, they're kind of hot. Um, let me perception check. That's uh, 23. Okay, awesome. With the 23, you see that uh, they are around the Acorn's belt. Okay. Do I still have the pearl? Uh, you do have the Queen's Pearl. How long until the moon, or is he over Mr. Arcanus? Health does not matter as well. It depends on your energy. Should we put more good energy your way? Would that be helpful as well? Uh, he kind of cocks his head, uh, and he says, uh, I'm going to just like wiggle around and put like a good juju and cure you and left doing me. Yeah, just absolutely. Try doing the same thing that he's doing. Yeah. The little otter kind of sits up on his back. Too. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? You can get an inspiration point for that. That was, yeah. that was cute. I'm just kind of looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an 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 cool. Cool. To be honest, I'm going to throw a gold coin to see if the model is. Do we even know? <laughs> hey, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, he rolled one. He ding. It like clicks on the back of his shell, and he doesn't even notice as it clanks to the ground. Um, uh, he tells, like, has you sit up, has you kind of deep breath. Uh, he waddles over to the brook uh, and kind of gets. Uh, he has hold water, so he uses his hands essentially to like give you like a cup of water, which is just the water. <laughs> yeah, and you guys just see like like actual water just. Start to like disappear down his throat. Like, like, this is now. Besides bringing me weakened druids, what else would you like? What else are you bringing? Uh, uh, Those seeds that you got, I was going to bring them here for the council. Yes. yes. And I have the queen's pearl. An artifact of the queen was found alongside these other materials. Well, they started cracking. <laughs> well, it seems that as though cleansing may be in order for several of your party. <laughs> uh, he chuckles to himself uh, before he says, you start with. So these both seem to be urgent matters. Uh, Acronis inhales and looks at you guys and says, you come here on urgent business. What shall we attend to first? The world seeds. The world seeds which your friend was after, huh? Uh, it was not my friend. He did not treat you very friendly. Yeah. As he kind of waddles very slowly you know, with his little pouch over to kind of that brook that he, the brook head that he had got, uh, he takes one of the seeds out, uh, looking at the others, decide just to uh, hold it up. Uh, he says a prayer which you're able to listen to and understand in Druidic. Uh, you know from context that it is uh, a general cleansing of just essentially like all like man-made curses and all like man-made stuff but if it's you know, if it's natural then there's na negative natural energy in the world so he says his prayer lowers it into the water uh and immediately as it's put in the water you guys start seeing like a little bit of bubbles kind of start coming from the bottom um that look all natural to the spring and the rock and the flow of the water uh, momentarily, uh, and it kind of starts bubbling 
more and more as it turns into like a raging, uh, almost seems to be boiling as the area around it, you know, the egg is sunk a little bit lower into uh, the brook head. It's moving a little bit more closer towards the center of the uh, uh, brook head there. Uh, and you guys see like a crack start forming. Uh, once this crack starts forming, you guys see even the familiar uh, purple fey energy leak from the crack as it's tumbling and turning uh, this brook from the, the clearest stream you could think of into something more akin to like a, a, a tapioca or a pudding as it's now thick and syrupy. The whole stream? The brook head and then everything beyond it starts to become immediately and fastly uh, uh, intercepted by this attack on it. Uh, you guys hear as the stream kind of flows through the world tree and back, some kind of groaning and some growth happening. Uh, Acronis is uh, quickly, uh, he's continuing the ritual and the prayer, and he says, please check uh, on the golden oak. Gaston is in there. Okay. You see him kind of like start to block the flow of the water from the waterfall a little bit. And... Uh, we head to Gaston. Awesome. You guys go around the corner and then you guys peek your head into the world tree that you guys uh, have been. Sorry. You guys peek your head along into the world tree that you guys were actually in earlier. You guys see stairs going down along the side of it uh, as well, but 180 degrees apart from you. You guys see the entrance of the stream or from earlier because it's going through and working its way through this uh, tree uh, along with a couple pews and a bridge. This stream before your eyes is turning this most gross color uh, as Gaston is resting on a bed. big is the entrance of the stream? The entrance of the stream is roughly like 10 feet, but it's kind of like just the entrance of the stream, like inside the thing. So it's running through, but however, there's not like a obvious entry point, yeah. if that makes sense. So we couldn't just take something and block it. No, you could definitely do that. I want to do that. Okay. Uh, you said Gaston was like sleeping? Uh, he is um, using the space as a dressing room. Oh, he's on one of the pews down below. Can we like wake him up and ask him what's going on? No, uh, he is unconscious, so you can try to do a medicine check on him. Do okay. a medicine check with my healing potion left on him? I'll do a medicine check on him. Probably. Yeah. You guys are all at the top of the stairs, so you guys are going to have to run down yeah. the stairs. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Okay, awesome. I need a running order. I need a running order. 20. Yeah, 20. Nat 20. Nat 20. Nat 20. 18. 18. 20. Oh, whoa. Three nat 20s and an 18. Another fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys rolled really well. Um, I'm going to let you guys figure this one out. But essentially, as I'll the. I'll go first. As the. I'll go first. I, I carried it here. I had a medicine check. The stream that you guys, like, if you guys run down, well, you guys quickly, by the way, make it all the way down. The stream is warm. It bubbled, and before you guys know, the flow is stopped. Oh. Uh, as you feel kind of like a depreciating of the tree, as it's kind of, as you like, kind of feel a force drain from it, essentially, as it's not receiving the root as it needs. Uh, before you guys are coming out of the walls, growth of plants you see a hand on one side and then another one come across as a am i having a danger sense going on absolutely you think it's about to go down as i need you guys all to roll me initiative oh all right 19 2 17 6 (laughs) awesome and with the magic of editing we are now ready for battle All right, so we have our initiative order. Uh, you guys have essentially just triggered uh, a sort of fey fight inside the large oh, tree of Bashingwood. No. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, to start us off, we have Ludicius. Remember, you can always do skill checks. You can um, I have a sheet out with all of your actions in combat. You can look at as well. So go ahead, and it is your turn, my friend. Granted, this is also not completely a skill. Okay. <laughs> So, what's up with these trees? What's going on? Yeah. Where, um, would you like? Can I do a history check? I don't know if that even helps. Insight? Insight. Yeah. So, essentially, crawling and emerging from 
the tree, which is now having uh, its internal life force kind of stop and switched with something uh, so negative and uh, what's it aggressive. Uh, these kind of like have taken like the roots have grown out and now they will not like you guys, so they are coming after you. You notice you have several wooden enemies as well as these guys back here. Um, roll me either a nature or a survival check, everybody. 18. 17. You guys can make sure you add your stuff, by the way. What? 17. Yeah, with a 18. <laughs> what? 10. Oh, with a survival? Just getting 18, sorry. There you go. Um, yeah, okay, so then you guys understand them as uh, specifically Brahma knows them to be uh, uh, dryads, which uh, are true fey imbued wooden creatures. So why don't they lie to us? It's not on your same vibe. Okay. Rude. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so then immediately in front of Ludysius, uh, he sprouted within... He sprouted within swinging distance. Uh, there is one wood guy in front of you. Uh, with your guys' high perception, you guys notice these little dots around here are gas spores. These giant mushrooms uh, have kind of immediately sprouted and hanging very heavy. Did you roll? Wait, it's not my turn yet. Okay, sorry. Okay. I know what I need to know. These motherfuckers seem like they're trying to attack us or something. <laughs> so, you know what you gotta do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just straight with go into the attack. He's gonna be creative. <laughs> um. So, I will do action surge. Right. So I'm about to take my flaming bow, shoot it right in the forehead of that freaking tree guy right in front. Absolutely. Roll. Roll ahead. Come on. 17. Hit. Roll for damage. Eight. Mm. Roll for damage. 1d8. 1d8. Or, yeah, 1d8. And as a level 5 fighter, you do have something called multi attack, which means you can attack twice without using your action surge. Mm. Whoa. Oh shit, um, I have that too. Just automatically? Yeah. Uh, That's what I'm And, but two actually plus one fire damage and plus one attack. So that's plus two. Yep. For four. Uh, yeah, so you're going to multi attack? Yeah, I'm going to multi attack. Do it. <laughs> four again. <laughs> uh, roll the hit again, I'm sorry. I did. I oh, you. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Five. Okay, so you rear back, you take your first bullet, or your first arrow, I'm going to say you knock both of them at the same time. Uh, as you pull it back, it ignites the flame head. You know, it's the enchantment that she has on. So it lets it go. One goes and lands and actually hits the side of the tree. Uh, something you guys might need to pay attention to. Uh, and the other one is going to smack and hit him right where he says in the forehead. It's, it's still in there. You can see like a little burn mark happen. Uh, you just said it did four damage. Plus two because he's... Is it fire damage? Yes, because it increases. Yep. So he takes... Awesome. Working on your turn. That will. Um, so is he been knocked down or what's he doing? What happens when I hit him? Or yeah. Uh, you hit him and you see that the bullet, the arrow, not bullet, uh, kind of stuck in him and it's just starting to burn. He's not really reacting. I got hurt. Is that starting on fire or anything? Not immediately. Oh. It's not like kerosene, so. Oh, weird. Well, uh, can I do a movement? Yes. All right, and so I'm going to dash that. Ooh. Are you allowed to dash? Okay, dash is an action, um, and you took your action to attack. But, but can you, just move? you can still move. But, but dash move is like this. Yeah, yeah, dash is how you double your movement speed. Mm. Okay, yeah. So I'm just going to do regular movement. All right, yeah, so you're just going to, so these, from where you're at, you're kind of backed up against the wall. The stairs are blocked. You can't really go anywhere. So to move, you have to cross either 
the gas floor or move past his threatened area, I'm going to be taking that. And uh, when you move past people, like, you get an attack on you. Right? Yeah, that's what he will. Like, you can move in this direction in over here, but he'll probably get an attack of opportunity. Yeah. I don't even know how much time he can get, so I'm just going to hold because I see blue already, so I got, like, I got backup if need be. I say, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Go! <laughs> Motherfuckers trying to attack me, bro. Why are you just standing? Did he swing at you? He's like, Come Look at him. What about <laughs> He's just existing, bro. You just attacked him for no reason. He's just lumbering in it. Yeah. No. Dude, my bad. I thought he was trying to attack us. He did just come out I of mean, a wall. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you could have talked to him. I could have talked to him. Yeah, Yo, Bruno, you have some words? When it's my turn? Because we're in initiative? Yep. Oh shit. Whose initiative is next? Um, so if you stop your movement, it's going to be uh, this dryad over here. Uh, you guys are going to see that her quarter staff that she has, like, is going to be immune. It has uh, purple and pink kind of sparks coming out the tip now. Uh, is this the same purple we saw in the pearl? Yeah, absolutely. Is it bad? Um, it's not great, probably. Okay. Um, and then, uh, she's gonna be used, yeah, she, so she uses that, use her movement to position herself over here. What is the dice representing? Uh, giant gas spores or mushrooms. Oh, oh, those are the mushrooms, okay, okay. Um, you I want to start have raging. your danger, saw, danger sense go off whenever you approach one of these I mushrooms. want to start raging. Okay, yeah, but it's not your turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna say your danger sense is going off. Okay. That takes okay, so then this one is gonna take uh, his turn. Take his movement to lumber over here. Uh, he's going to stop and step on that and trigger what this happened. Oh. Uh, he stick, steps blindly, just <laughs> onto the top of the gas floor, and I need Odysseus Bruinor, Kitsamani, and Jean to roll me. A strength saving throw. Do we add any more? No. 14. Well, your saving throw if you have. If your strength? So but you 10. do! You add your proficiency. You say me too. Wait, what? Everybody. 17. Wait, 10. what? That's a. Oh, uh. Uh. 18. Uh, wait. Yeah. Saving throw. 21. <laughs> I can't oh. math. Nice. <laughs> oh. 10. All right, so anybody who got less than 15 is <laughs> exploded with little Whoa. pores as you got your <laughs> thrown into your mouth and you guys take some roll me 3d6 and that's how much damage you take. Two. Two, four. Oh, you have all my three. Six. Seven damage, everybody who uh, did not get above 15, you take three. Three? So I had temp health from our last game, do I still have it? Temp health? Yeah. No, not from that. Yikes. I know. I forgot which character mine was on the board. There, I see which one it is. Okay, okay you guys uh, initially are not affected <coughs> by the poison from this guy. Okay. Alright, get some money. Yeah, I'm gonna start raging. Please. Rage. Um, so these are... Wait, which... This is me and Jean. Who are yeah. Bruinor and... Bruinor, Ludicius, uh, these are some wood guys. Um, and then this is the stairs, and then they're kind of getting at the bottom of the stairs. Where is... Um, uh, what's his name? Gaston. Yeah, Stone is going to be uh, back here. I can put him as a person if you want to. Where's Kiori? Yeah, Kiori and Muck. Kiori is right here. Oh, where's Muck? Muck just assumed next to her? Yeah. Okay. If, uh, yeah. Okay, fuck. Uh... <laughs> I love it! I love that. You know, I am going to. How are these dudes on my level? 
level of brain activity or are they higher than me? That's a really good question. How do you check for that? <laughs> like, are they gonna insight or a history check? Which one's higher for you? Uh, I'll do an insight. Okay. That's an eleven. Uh, with an eleven, you think that they can listen to simple commands, but you don't think they're voting on anything. Lit. Um. All right. So, since I am raging, I am no longer affected by any poison that comes my way. So, I am going to start hacking them down with my great axe. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so... I kind of You wanna... are not in direct line with this guy. Like, you'd have to, like, jump off and do some cool shit to hit him. Can I <laughs> jump from where I'm at, tackle him into the dude behind him, and then take my great axe and go through both of them? Because mm. that's Possibly. technically a move and an action. No. What? <laughs> no, tackling someone is an action. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I can't do two moving. actions? No. Moving is one action. Oh. Um, but yeah, you can definitely tackle him. I'm going to tackle them. Absolutely. I'm going to tackle him into the second dude. Yeah, roll a strength check, please. That Ooh. is a... Fifteen? Yeah, it's higher than him. So you dive, then you go right as uh, he's kind of raising his club. You kind of go, you kind of grab his club, and you kind of like start to drag him down. Uh, I'm going to say that you're down here now. You're on your feet. Uh, he's now prone, which is basically ready to attack. You get an advantage on him now. As you okay. kind of like swing and tear him down. Um, yeah, he wasn't necessarily, you didn't roll high enough to knock over his leg. Where's he just done? How do you get over there? Okay, so I think you still have an attack left. I still have an attack left. Yeah, All right. I'm going to let you do oh, that. Oh, you did a move. Yeah. What? I did a You just said that was an attack. No, I know. But uh, I'm letting it slide this time for multi attack. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, so the one is prone. Just because I, in my head it sounds cool that you like, grab and flip him and bump him up. Um, so now that he's on the ground and prone... I kind of want to, like, swing around, smack the back of the buddy's head, and knock him on top of the prone dude. Um, okay, so you want to stop and swing and hit that guy? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Roll to hit. What do I add to that? Do I add my strength to that? Um, and your proficiency bonus. Okay, so that is... 25. I can't. Laugh. Yeah, with a 25, yeah, oof, immediately you hit him and knock him on top of his buddy. So now yeah. you have two wood guys knocked completely prone as this little half is like, woof, woof, woof. <laughs> Can Carrie be like, Wah! Yeah, she's freaking out. Uh, you hear Muck kind of make whatever annoying Otter makes since he's pretty excited about all the action. Uh, and immediately get some money. Um, your sister Koyori understands what's going on. Uh, she recognizes the danger in hand. She whips out her bow and says, let's go. Uh, and uh, goes to attack. Uh, this one on top and manages to hit him. Dead. Four feet points of damage. Good job, Kaori. Uh, I thought I'd make these fights hard, okay? I really do. <laughs> You're the average one. <laughs> um, yeah, eight points of damage. Yeah, uh... He's like on the ground, just more wood, almost unreacted, you know, um, just because it's wood on wood and they're not the smartest of being. Uh, she's gonna send. She's gonna send <laughs> down here, but he's kind of congested. All right. Wait, why? Why is Muck leaving Carrie? Because she told him to. Why? Because she told him to. Okay. Um, and then it's going to be this one who's going to come over here. Uh, and swing at you. Can it be noted that my axe hasn't left my hands? Like, I'm, that's just assumed, but I'm going to just specify there. my axe is still, like, Sure. Yeah, about. you are specifically holding your axe very hard. Do you have to ready an action to block it? To block 
17 hit? Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. You are hit for... Oh, that's not a D8. You are hit for 8 points of damage, uh, halved to 4. Because range. How okay. big is this area actually? Oh. Uh, the diameter is about 150 feet. Okay. I forgot to tell you that I have plus two rage bonus. So whatever damage I cause to those two is plus two. You didn't cause any. Oh. What? You knocked them down? You, yeah, you knocked them prone. They got damage to them. No. Oh. But you knocked both of them prone. I didn't know what they got prone. That means everybody gets advantage on attacks. Okay, okay. So I like, can live with that. What okay. you did was very, very helpful, <laughs> actually. Cool. <laughs> um, no, I don't say that they have multi attack, but y'all are fucking them up, so I'm not gonna multi attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, only thinks it's a toy. It's not canon. <laughs> okay, and then a 12 doesn't hit you, right? Uh, as you're braced, looking at the other two that you just took down, like, yes, you're just kind of, boom, in the back of the head. Is that uh, considered bludgeoning? Yeah, that's always only half. So you just kind of, like, boom, hits you, and you're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then this other dryad um, over here is going to come uh, and cast a spell, and this time you guys see this guy's weapon kind of glow. And then, Jean, your turn. Okay. So, I want to use my axe when it like, throws and comes back to me against this guy. Okay, okay. Okay. Cool. An axe on a tree. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it works. By uh, get some money said it's just like shoot comes back to you. Okay, and then yeah. I wanna just go over to Kiori and just because she's like a youngin, I wanna try to protect her as much as I can. Um, Could I like ready something or do that? I just, you just like I just wanna action. protect. Okay, yeah. Otherwise, you could have ready to help action, or you could have stood in front of her and used a block action instead of my axe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll just run over. Ruin no. Okay. Let's go there. Got the butt. <laughs> I'm going to cast Conjure Animals. So I'm going to conjure a brown bear and a tiger. Whoa. You two? Yep. Ah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> They're only challenging one, so. Okay, I'm that. So, uh, so, yeah. I'm going to stick them on. Yeah, where do you where do you want them? I want them. <laughs> just in this. Do you have those? Just in this what? dog pile. You know, I want one here. I want the tiger there. Yes. It's a lion, but it works. We can, close enough. We could even say I conjure a lion. Yes. So conjure a brown bear or lion just in this cluster. <laughs> this is bad. Hi this guys. is really bad. How's it going? We need one AoE spell just to clear everybody up. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you need a what now? Area of effect spell. I don't have that. I can't do magic. Yeah, we're not, <laughs> and not yet. Not yet. Uh, uh, also, you pocket spells? Yeah. I can't read them. <laughs> and then I'm going to Ooh. go into my Chalice, star form. Gotcha. And that'll be it. I'm just kind of hanging. They're All right. Gonna, awesome. I mean, they're going to attack. Awesome. Yeah, so then. Yeah. Sorry, i got to pull this back up. I closed it. So you are good. Essentially, just keep track of their AC 
and their primary attack stack, and their HP. Yep. So Brown Bear has, oh wow, it has multi-attack. So it has Bite and Claw. Yep. So he's going to Bite and Claw this one that's on the ground being pinned down. Oh, awesome. So roll with advantage on both. Plus four. <laughs> so modded twenty. Okay. Hit. Don't even need to do it. And then eight plus four. Uh, so that's that's only twelve for the plus. What, you roll with advantage. Yeah, because yeah, right. they're in a pile. That is advantage. Come on. Fourteen. Does that do it? Eight. Uh, a fourteen is not. Oh. Okay. Can I just your bear? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just bear. So that's one D eight. You gotta make your so fight harder. Be, yeah, apparently. Thirteen. Oh my god, want to kill us all. Thirteen piercing. Okay. And then, um, yeah, now for the tiger. Oh, <laughs> now for the tiger. Which one? Sorry, which one? The bottom one or the top one? Did you do the first time? Bottom yes. guy. Okay. There, now it's the lion. And lions get to go after this guy that's just standing there. Okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> so it's going to do. <laughs> no, he's not far enough away. Okay. attack rolls against a creature of at least one of the lion's allies is within five feet of creature and isn't incapacitated. Yeah, he already has advantage, though. So, well, you don't get double advantage. It's on this guy. Okay, yeah. okay, even better. I am so definitely I'm, within five feet. You want to attack that guy, then? I'm also going to have advantage on him. Cool. So, so yeah. I'm okay. Sure. I don't think he has um, double attack, though, so... It's just going to be one attack. Uh, he's going to try to bite him. Oof, not very good. So this is weird. Yeah. I have no No, no. It's ten. It's only ten. Uh, ten will not hit. No, sorry. He, he doesn't get it. Even with the bandage? Yeah. I didn't oh, really shit! Good. I mean, it's only like, plus three. Yeah. yeah. That's, fun too. That's awesome. Um, more. Okay, so then. This guy is going clear. Okay, well, that works. Have we killed anyone yet? No. Two people are prone. I knocked two people. What's eight plus eleven? Nineteen. I am ready. Right? No. Yeah? yeah. No. Yes. Eight plus eleven. Yeah. It's wow. We got it. <laughs> um, with a glowing club uh, raining oh. down on the small foe in front of him, he whoop, this one smashes Koyori oh, no. uh, as she's lining up. He goes and tries to hit her arm specifically to mess up her no. shot. Uh, as she's winding up, winding back, he uh, hits it. You guys see like a huge <laughs> scream. Um, Can I rage even harder? <laughs> <laughs> no, possibly. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Ooh, okay. Um, and that is great. that guy's move. This one down here is going to stand up finally. <gasps> no! Gosh. And then does a 16 hit you? My armor class is 16. Okay, so then only one hit. What? What does that mean? It means that only gets one hit? Uh, I rolled twice and one of them was... Oh, okay. Uh, as you uh, upset that you had just managed to knock him prone and, you know, falling on his buddy, he's upset and swings at you. 
Ooh, they all have the same lumbering attack. Have they? Really big. He hits you, whomps you for eight points of damage. Did he hit me in the axe? Um, yeah, he did. And then it managed to actually squeeze your fingers really bad, and you take eight points of damage. That's what? Before. What? <laughs> eight points of damage in my fingers? Yeah, it hurts. As, uh, he's pushed back. Uh, the amount of pressure in the forest is just so much. All right, Ludicius, top of the initiative hey, order. Finally, go. round two. Actually, can yeah. somebody please roll me a d20 luck check? Who? Someone. 19. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this one is about to hit. Who? Yeah. This one right just here. hit. I think this guy fell, but he's still standing. Yeah. There's only one guy. <coughs> okay, so I see that big tree guy. He hit one girl in the front. What's her name? That's Koyori. 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 I've been saying I know. I've been hearing Koyori. I thought years. it was Koyori. I said it once I I last session, but I uh, introduced her as Koyori. 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 This freaking trees hitting on children. I don't like it. I'm freaking pissed. So, um, after we had fought the Lemurad, I had four scrolls, right? So, um, I'm going to go, I think an action is improvised, right? So, I open the scroll, um, seeing it's going to do something against these trees. What does it say specifically the scrolls have? I couldn't read the scrolls. Interesting. <laughs> they're blank scrolls. I don't know what they're blank. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good if they're blank. I'm going to let you redo your action if you want to. <laughs> instead of just hold up blank <laughs> scrolls. Can I not like hold the power and I roll you, the power? You can try. Power. Sure, go for it. Roll me an arcana check. You're holding up a sheet of paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit. Well, you know, I tried, right? So, um... You can make spells with those. You can make, like... Oh. Uh, you can make... Uh, yeah, but just, like, I can't do anything right now. Not right now, but like in the future, you can make... <laughs> I was just like, let's spell them. That's what I thought, but I was... You know, I'm saying now. You know what I'm saying? Really? I'm trying. Uh, well then, you know, I'm pissed because this shit's about to be a paper and that should cost me an action. So can I action surge? You can just have your action back and go back. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I say fuck it. You know, I'll put the paper back. It is what it is, you know. Um, so I grab my bow again this time and I shoot my flaming arrow at tree that attack Kaori. Got you. Roll roll to hit, please. Save this little ranger. Twenty. Yeah. yeah. Roll for your double name. Actually roll a hit again, remember? Multi attack. Oh. Yeah. One. Roll a nat twenty and then a nat one. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Roll me for damage twice and double both of the dice. Eight. So roll it again. One. What's <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? Wow. Oh. Okay, now please roll me two D8s again. Again? Three. Eight. Uh, three and an eight. Um, and that's no action. And that's though. without any adding. Yeah. Any. You wind up doing a, a signature two arrow knock, right? Oh. You line yourself up and you heard the scream of the little girl, you know, immediately your protection sense came in. You're like, I gotta do it. You whip around, you aim up the stairs. You see a giant target, bang, the top one hits it right square. You Robin Hood your other arrow, right? Causing the fire to yeah. spread even further. Uh, uh, so he takes a massive point of damage, as you can see, that's like actually causing him to split kind of like down the middle, and you can like almost see through him as ash is starting to form a ring. Uh, however, your bottom arrow loses a little bit of trajectory and uh, hits Gene right in the fucking ear and is sticking straight out like this. 
as you take 11 points of damage. Oh, oh my shit. That. I'm sorry, Jean. I didn't mean that. I like your ear piercing! Oh. Yeah, what do you say when you get in there? I don't know. Just ah. scream out. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so this one's going to come over here, uh, and she's going to take a whack at your. with her uh, imbued weapon at your. Yes. <laughs> I'm going so good. Uh, I don't know what to do. I don't have a D4 here, my Holly. Uh, she comes up and seeing the undercarriage of this lion exposed as the tail is kind of whipping him back, and she goes, What the hell? You know, kind of goes right through the gonads as he takes 11 points of damage. How are you? I thought the dryads were on our side. <laughs> From the lion as it roars out in pain. Uh, yeah, and she feels very satisfied with that slap, as you can see her face kind of like a sinister smile to it. And she, yeah, yeah, like, it cracks as a way to show that she's, her skin is not necessarily human or nature. It's a mixture of the two, you know, exposing that sort of. Dryads are trees oh, or things geez. that have, like, the fae uh, imbued in them. She's not technically humanoid. She's a fae spirit, just, you know. Interesting. I'm saying she, but they actually don't have gender, so... Thanks. Sorry for my antiquated yeah. terms. I hope they're all female. That technically is neutral. It's made of wood. Though. What are, what are <laughs> we? Those are the gas spores. Uh, uh, as seen earlier, if agitated, sure. they might have explosives. Oh. And it's going to be this one right here, who's getting fucked up. This guy is not having a good day. Get some money. You're standing up, okay, but I'm not going to help you. Yeah, okay. Um, who does he want to hurt? Probably me. <laughs> he's so upset. There's so many options of everything around him that he's just going to take a random swing. And he's going to... Blue says, I'm assuming, uh, 11 misses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he rages all around him as everybody kind of takes his little step back. Uh, he tries his hardest as he looks back, sees you, tries to look whip and hit you, and you just kind of move out of the way. Nothing happens. Get some money. Your turn. Wow, I'm in a whole pile of nonsense. Yeah. For real. <laughs> I'll step back up. What do we get ourselves into? I'm not sure about that. Sorry. <laughs> that is a pile of nonsense. That's a good word for it. Join us next week. Yeah. <laughs>